Resident Evil is a franchise that started its life on the PlayStation 1. Resident Evil, or Biohazard as it is known in Japan, was released in 1996 on the PlayStation 1. It was set up as a campy, B-movie horror flick with terrible acting and even worse writing. The gameplay consisted of the player controlling one of the two characters, either Chris Redfield or Jill Valentine, using what's known as tank controls. What tank controls means is that when you push up on the D-pad or joystick, your character will move forward in the direction they are facing. To turn the character, the player would have to press either left or right on the controller so that they would turn and then they would press forward again to resume walking. These controls made the game feel unwieldy at times, but added to the tension of the game because it made the player feel like they were struggling to get away from the zombies instead of feeling like a badass. Along with these controls, there was no way to maneuver the camera at all because the game used what is called a fixed camera. These controls and fixed cameras were again used in the next two games in the main series, Resident Evil 2 and Resident Evil 3 Nemesis, released in 1998 and 1999 respectively. Along with Resident Evil 2 and 3, the many spin-off games also use the same controls and fixed camera angles. It wasn't until six years after the last mainline Resident Evil game that things changed. Enter the topic of today's discussion, Resident Evil 4. Before we start, I need to state that I am a little biased when it comes to this topic since I consider Resident Evil 4 to be one of the greatest games of all time. Now that that's out of the way, let's get on with it. Resident Evil 4 was released in January of 2005 exclusively on the GameCube. It was part of a five game deal that Capcom made with Nintendo for exclusive games. This exclusivity only lasted 10 months however as it was ported to PlayStation 2 in October of the same year. Since then it has been ported to every major console as well as mobile and on PC. It's probably up there on the list of most ported games of all time at this point. Okay, now onto the game. First thing that needs to be said is that Resident Evil 4 is the first game in the series to be a third person action game. Gone is the survival horror aspects, in is the new and redefining over the shoulder third person action. This departure from what it used to be was huge. Resident Evil 4 is still a divisive game, some claiming that they jump the shark as they cry out for how you Resident Evil used to be. Myself, on the other hand, along with the majority of people believe that Resident Evil 4 is one of the most fantastic games ever made and was instrumental in creating the now ubiquitous, over-the-shoulder, third-person action we can find in games like Gears of War and more recently The Division from Ubisoft, which was released this year. Resident Evil 4 definitely re redefined the action game, but it's still some DNA left in it from its older siblings. Some of the aggravating tank controls were still in the game. This led to not allowing the player to shoot and move at the same time. This idea of having the player plant their feet and pick their targets carefully added to the tension of the game immensely. I've heard many people say that Resident Evil 4 is nowhere as scary as previous titles, and I tend to agree with them, but no other Resident Evil game makes my heart pump as fast and as hard as this one. Within the first 15 minutes of the game, the player is thrust into a fast-paced, do-or-die survival situation. As you enter this village, all of the villagers become aware of your presence and begin the relentless journey to kill you. You do all that you can, but you eventually run out of ammo, which forces you into a building which triggers a cutscene. And just as an aside, I think that this part of the game is expert game design. By giving the player such little ammo, we are forced into the houses and eventually into the one that triggers the cutscene. Now, during the cutscene, a man with a chainsaw appears. His only mission is trying to chop your goddamn head off. It is terrifying. But thankfully, there is a shotgun hung on the wall upstairs to level the playing field. After the player kills enough of the villagers, another cutscene plays, and that's the end of it. All of this, the control, the overwhelming forces, and lack of ammo all add up to one of the most panic-inducing and intense gaming experiences, all within the first 20 minutes of playing. Now, going back to what I said earlier about Resident Evil 1 and how it was a B-movie horror flick, Resident Evil 4 has some of that DNA left in it as well. The main character, Leon, is constantly making wisecracks and funny observations about what is going on around him. One such quip is at the end of the first village encounter I just talked about. After everyone leaves the village, Leon says, short of breath, Hey, where'd everyone go? Bingo? It's stuff like this that keeps the pace and flow of the game at such a steady clip. When you aren't fighting for survival, the game is kind of poking fun at itself too. In conclusion, I give it a 10 out of 10. Now, it's funny to look at how Resident Evil changed or didn't change after 4. The subsequent releases of 5 and 6 went further down the action road, making them basically Michael Bay movies. It's been more than 10 years since Resident Evil 4 took the world by storm and really changed the game. Now, in January of next year, exactly 12 years after Resident Evil 4 came out, Resident Evil 7 is slated to hit shelves, once again changing the entire formula for a Resident Evil game. It will be entirely in first person and will harken back to its survival horror roots. 
I can't wait. Thanks for watching. Everyone's gone. Bingo, 